Hello, Dr. Ron Eglin here, and this is Getting Started with Java 2, the second video. And uh, what I've got so far is NetBeans installed, and I've created a project, and I'm going to bring up the blank project, because what we're going to do today is we're going to just take an average of a bunch of numbers. But we don't know how many numbers we're going to take an average of. The user needs to be able to decide that, but they don't necessarily have to enter that ahead of time. Okay, so basically, let's think about what we're going to do here. We're going to take an average of a bunch of numbers, and when the user is done entering numbers, they need to enter something to tell the computer to stop taking numbers and give us the output of the average. So how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing that we know is that we're going to need to use an object to get input from the user. And that object is going to be a scanner. Okay, I'm telling you, a scanner works pretty well here. But scanners aren't built into Java by default, so we have to import them. So we're going to use the keyword import. And, of course, you also have to know what the scanner is. Well, the scanner is in java.util. Now, when you do java.util, Wow, there is a lot of stuff in java.util. Look at all this cool stuff in here. You've got time zones and timers and um, random and optional int and objects. And uh, But you know what? We already know which one we want to use. We want to do the scanner. So we can enter the scanner. And now we have access to create scanners. Okay, And scanners are great for doing, for doing input. Now let's go. In Java, there is a class that was where you're going to put your code. Okay, class is just a definition of an object. The class is called Java App Average, and it's going to have a method. Remember, classes have methods and properties. Okay, objects, classes have methods, properties. All right, so we're going to come down here into main, which will be the what will be executed by default, and we're going to start putting our code. Now we got to think about what we're going to do here. We are going to let the user enter numbers and take an average of all those numbers until we get to where the user doesn't want to do that anymore. So one way to do this is by the use of a sentinel value. We call it a sentinel value. It's just a name that we use for it. And let's do this. Let's go ahead and define a sentinel value. We'll make this a double. That way the user can kind of enter whatever they want to use there. And we're going to call that sentinel. Okay, now, you first tell what you're going to make, then you give it the name, and let's set the sentinel value default equal to zero. So, there's this thing called a sentinel now that is a double, which is a floating point number, and it's called sentinel, and it has the value of zero. Now we're going to need to make a loop. So let's make a loop while, and we now have to have a condition for that loop. The condition is going to be as long as sentinel is not equal to negative one, Let's just do what's ever inside the loop. Okay, well, what's going to be inside the loop is going to be getting input and then going ahead and when you're done, going ahead and calculating the average. So there's a few other things that we might want to do outside the loop. We know that we need to take an average. So to take an average, we need to know how many numbers that the user entered. So we know that we need a counter int. I think that'd be good for a counter. And let's just set it equal to zero because the user hasn't entered any numbers yet. We also, now comes the big stuff. We need an object to let the user enter information. Well, I already said that we were going to use a scanner to do this. So we need to make a scanner, Java. First, say what object you're going to make, scanner. Give it a name. Input's a good name for the scanner because it's going to be to do input. And now that you're creating this object, you have to instantiate it. You have to create an instance of the object. Well, in the case of a scanner, you really need to instantiate it using its constructor. A constructor is something that objects have that let you build the object the way that you want to do it. So we're going to make the way that we use this constructor for a scanner is use the keyword new, new scanner, and the scanner, actually, the new scanner has to have something that tells it what to make the new scanner with. Well, if you recall, we're going to go down here, and I'm just going to do this. So if you recall, we've got this object called system. 
and it's got properties and methods. It's got three properties and a ton of methods. The three properties were air, in, and out. The scanner needs an input stream to be able to work. And the input stream is actually built in the system as a property called system.in. So now we can come back up here and make this scanner with the object system.in, which is an input stream. And now I should have a working scanner. Now, first thing it's going to do is it's going to underline this and it's going to tell me it's not being used. <laughs> Neither is my counter. Well, <coughs> guess what? We're going to use them. Okay, now let's go inside our while loop. Now this while loop is going to run as long as Sentinel is not equal to negative one. And when you first start, the Sentinel is equal to zero. So we want the user to input numbers. Okay, input numbers. And then we want to tell the user that when you input a negative one, we're going to be done. And so let's let the user do that. So let's first Go ahead, and you know what? And I can declare a value here. I can declare a value elsewhere. But we got to have a value that the user is going to do is going to input. But first thing we need to do is we need to prompt them system dot out dot print. We think we've done that one before, and uh, we can go ahead and put the prompt here that says please enter another a number for the average. And we're going to put negative one to exit. We're basically telling the user, enter a number. If you want to get done, if you're done entering numbers, then put negative one to exit. Or negative one, enter negative one when done might be a better way to say that. Enter negative one when done. Okay, so the user is now going to enter a number. So we now need to get input. System, okay, well we don't need to do this with system. We've got a scanner. Now remember our scanner is named input. Now input's got all sorts of, input being a scanner, has going to have all sorts of different way things that you can be able to read. Well, I'm sorry, a whole bunch of different methods. And really the method that we need in this case is next double because we're going to actually have them input a double. So we're going to do input next double. Of course, that really doesn't do anything because I'm not putting that anywhere. I need to put it into a variable. And I need a variable for, to put it in and that variable will be needs to be a double. So what I will do right here is I will go do two things. I'm going to add two new variables outside of the while loop that we're going to use. We have the sentinel, we have the counter. We now need we now need the number that the user is going to input. And I'm going to call that user input equals okay, and I'm going to just default it to zero. I don't actually need to default it to anything here, but let's just do that. So the users, this is going to be the, the number that the user inputs. So now, down here, we can say the user input equals what the user inputs from the keyboard. All right, I also need another one here because I need the total, double total. And I'm going to start that one off at 0. Double total equals 0. And here's a conditional. If that user input is not equal to negative one, I want to increment the total and increment the count, the counter. So if user input is not equal to negative one, I need to take the total and I need to add in the user input. And I also need to increment the counter. Whoops, plus plus. And that will increment the counter by one each time. So inside the while loop, all this is going to go on. And if the user input is not equal to negative one, it will do those things. Now, if the user input is equal to negative one, when it gets down here to this next bracket right here, it's going to go up and check the sentinel against that. Well, here's the thing. Um, the sentinel 
is still 0. I haven't changed it. So what could I do? Well, one thing I could do is I could actually make the sentinel be equal to, the instead of using a user input, I could use a sentinel here. Or if the user input is equal to negative 1, I could also set that sentinel equal to negative 1, or I could actually set it equal to the user input also. So now, when the user inputs a negative 1, okay, it will also set the sentinel equal to negative 1, and it should jump you out. All right, last thing i got to do to fix it, make this whole thing work. Now, that looks like a little bit more of a convoluted way to do this, but it allows me to demonstrate a while loop and an if-then. Whoa, more programming for you to see. Last thing that I need to do is I need to get the average, so double average, and I technically should only do this if they've entered a number, okay? Because you're going to make it be equal to the total divided by the counter, but if the counter is, if you, they start with a negative one, the counter is going to be equal to zero. So I should really only do this in that case, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about that right now. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show a the system not out. I'm going to go ahead and print out on a new line the average is, and I can just put in that average right there. Now, we've gone far enough. Let's try it. Let's hit the magic green button. Java, 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 run, compile, compile, compile. Or as one of my favorite programmers says, chunka, 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 chunka is chunking. All right, so now we're going to enter a number 45. And we got to enter another number, 78. And we enter another number, 85. And then we enter another number, negative 1. And it gives me the average. Wow. Successful. It worked. Great. So what have we learned? Well, we learned how to declare a bunch of variables, how to use them, how to use a sentinel value to actually have execution of a loop, how to use a scanner, where the scanner is actually located, okay, and also um, how to use an if-else statement all in Java. Wow, that's a whole lot of stuff, and we did it in 13 minutes if I stop right now.